Hey guys, what is going on? So today I have got another Lamb of God review. So yesterday I reviewed um, As the Palaces Burn, their second album, and this is their first album, uh, New American Gospel. This is probably my favorite for them, to be honest. So it's their debut album. Some people say that the Burn the Priest album, which if you don't know, um, Lamb of God, the original band name was Burn the Priest, and they changed their name to Lamb of God. Um, I think it was that they would be mistaken for a satanic metal band. Um, uh, the Burn the Priest album, I enjoy it, but I don't like it as much as I used to. I don't own it, but uh, I remember like listening to it on the internet when I first got into Lamb of God and being like, fuck, man, this is extreme. And then then now like I got into death metal and it's like I can't I can't listen to it and get that same kind of kick out of it, but I still enjoy um, that album a little bit. But this one is really fucking good. So um, while Burn the Priest was more just straight death metal with a little bit of thrash metal, this was definitely, they had more groove. They had, um, this one is probably a mix of death, grinding groove. There isn't a lot of thrash metal elements on here, but this one has a lot of, uh, this one has a lot of death metal on it, but it also has quite a bit of grindcore. Um, and also the groove on here is honestly the, probably the strongest of all the Lamb of God albums in my opinion. But here's the album cover. It's okay. Lamb of God were never really a band that were too crazy about making kick-ass album covers other than maybe As the Palaces Burn or Ashes of the Wake. But I fucking love the As the Palaces Burn album cover. Um, but I don't really care. I'm not a huge fan of any of their album covers. I'm not saying they're bad. They're just kind of, eh. And it's the kind of the same deal with this one. It's okay. I think it's actually done by the same guy who did As the Palaces Burn. There's the spine. It's pretty basic. And there's the back with the track listing. And there's, um, like with uh, As the Palaces Burn, this is a remaster, but I prefer the remix on here uh, over the original. Rather than on As the Palaces Burn, I don't like the remix, but, um, it sounds very good. Um, it's very, the product, the original production is very raw, but kind of like thin sounding. So they just made it a little bit meatier sounding on here. So, so that's cool. There's the disc. And then there's like a shit ton of liner notes back there. Just telling about like the making of the album. So that's sort of cool. Also, this is the first album they had with Mark Morton. I think, I don't think they had Mark Morton in Burn the Priest. So here's all the lyrics. The lyrics on this album are probably my favorite out of any of the Lamb of God releases. They're really, really pissed off on this album, um, as compared to they got a little political on, like, Ashes of the Wake, or, like, you know, they're, they kind of got more variety of, like, what their songs are about, but on here, they're more, uh, just pissed off, and they're just really good. Oh, there's the back of the book, I think it makes one big picture. And then you have, um, a picture of the band right here, and they all look very young, except for, uh, Chris Adler, he looks, like, fucking the same, but, um... Yeah, like Willie Adler, he looks really different. He, um, especially Randy Blythe, you can't really tell because it's kind of like a shadowy picture. He looks, for the most part, similar. I don't know, but Mark Morton looked really different. He had he doesn't have long hair yet, and he he didn't have a beard, and it's just really weird. And especially John Campbell, like his hair isn't all gray now. I mean, his his hair isn't all gray like he it is now, and he doesn't look like motherfucking like Gandalf or something. But yeah, really interesting to see like how the band has aged so much, I guess. I don't know. Um, so, yeah, this is a kick-ass album. Uh, one of my favorite metal albums of all time. So it opens up with Black Label, probably the most popular song on here. And it's a really kick-ass song. It's, like, really groove-oriented. It's really catchy, and that's the thing about this album. The songs I hear are really catchy, but it's still, like, pretty... Um, I'd say this is probably the most brutal album in all of Lamb of God's discography. This could probably compete with, like, some death metal, in my opinion. Um, or maybe even Grindcore. So, um, yeah, Black Label is great. At a Warning is kick-ass. That's uh, one of my favorites on here. It's kind of mid-paced at first, but then there's one part where they play this really fast part that sounds like a Grindcore song with, like, these blast beats and stuff. And it's just kick-ass. So, yeah, A Warning is amazing. Oh, and I really love the lyrics to that song. I'm going to read some of them. Um, the song is basically kind of like, it's like a fuck-off kind of song. He's, like, saying that he's, like, a monster, I guess. So like, the lyrics are, I'm a monster, so don't walk my way. Don't trust my smile. My teeth are like knives. I'll drag you down and suck you dry. Don't laugh at my jokes. The punchline is murder. Don't enjoy my touch. Every caress hides, hides a chokehold. I'm only happy when I've ruined everything I see. Believe everything you've ever heard about me. Suck it up. If you see me coming, don't stop. Just turn and walk the other way. I will not lie about what I have done. I will not lie about what I will do to you. The sweat of my exertion is pure poison. I'm hell. So that's just fucking awesome, you know, very dark and very just kind of angsty, but just kick-ass. Um, In the Absence of a Sacred, that's an awesome song. It, it's like, um, it's a, a little bit faster than um, the, the more mid-paced part of A Warning, but there's this part at the end where there's like this breakdown that's just 
Uh, it's one of those things where it's like, I'm not a huge breakdown person. Um, mostly because I don't really listen to a lot of stuff that has, like, breakdowns. I don't like, I'm not really into, like, metalcore or deathcore or anything like that. Um, other than some people might say Lamb of God or metalcore, but I don't really think so. They're more groove metal. But anyways, there's this breakdown at the end of that song where it's like, it's like you expect it to just be a straight beat. Like, uh, here's an example. Like, instead of just going, dun, 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 for the breakdown, they go, dun, 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 dun. Like, they kind of like, that was a horrible impression, but you know what I mean? Like, they kind of play like a beat, like, they play it off beat, so it sounds heavier, because it's like slower, you're expecting them to play a note, and then they play it a little later than you expect, and it makes it heavier. And it's like, the... Well, the thing about the groove on this album is that it's like it almost takes like physical exertion to listen to it's like you like breathe the weight really it's weird it's like it's not like i'm not saying it's like too heavy for me or anything it's just like i'm just saying it, the music the music almost kind of moves you on here with the, with the groove of it because it's like really like you like you like you don't notice but you're like taking like deep breaths and shit when you're listening to this because it's so like um just kick ass you know it's like when you're on you know when you're on a roller coaster and you're like going like the groove on this album. That's how it feels when you're on a roller coaster and it's like going all crazy and you're kind of like holding on. That's what like the groove of this album is like. You're like trying to keep up with it, and that's what's really awesome about this. Um, but yeah, that's why this is my favorite one I've got on because it's the most fun to listen to because of that. Um, or like six minutes in, I'm already on like I'm only on like the fourth song. What are the unborn? unborn? Um, kick ass song. Um, it's a little bit faster. And Randy Blythe's vocals on that song are really good. His vocals are very different on this album from everything else. Um, his, his vocals are more high pitched on here, while the other ones he meant not quite guttural, but more like just mid tempo growls or screams. But yeah, I'm not mid tempo, mid range. Yeah, uh, Black Dahlia is okay. It's not the best, but it's not the worst. It's still a good song. Um, but yeah, it kind of blends in with Larry the Inborn a lot though. Uh, Terran Hubris in the House of Frank Pollard. That's such a kick ass song. Um, really interesting song title, and I'm not 100 percent sure what the lyrics are about, but the lyrics are very interesting to that song. Um, let me read some, just a little bit of them. Um, all the fucked up things trap and punish me. I cannot explain my problem. Kill my hopeless, uh, life. I cannot be hypnotized. You owe me. Push aside the veil to welcome the, in the wizard, the visitors. Eyes like halogen, Im eliminate the sum appearing out of spherical night mask. Paleothetic, pro ah, paleolithic subconscious icons lumber through dreamscape and arch archetype of archangel. Top side is far. Let me just, like, go to the further part. This part's all, like, poetic and shit. Uh, Frank, what have you gotten me into now? I am not afraid to speak my heart and mind. It cannot be saved. Sell me over. Fuck your hopeless world. I am blacker than the sun. Tragedy. Have you seen the speedy? Yes. Bleeds through this sweep onto the page. I'm sailing. Just really interesting. And his vocals are probably... I'd probably say that that's for his best vocals on the whole album. Because he does this weird thing where he does this high-pitched scream. It almost sounds like a like a old lady at the beginning of the song. And then he does... And then he kind of counters that with this like deep growl. And it's like... It almost sounds like it's like a conversation between two people just like screaming at each other, but it's just kick-ass. So yeah, that's a great song. Um, it also has a really cool intro. Uh, the Subtle Arts of Murder for Sajun, that's a really good one. Another kind of popular song on here. Uh, the intro to that, that, or that riff that's in the beginning, um, the band <laughs> Slipknot kind of ripped off that riff um, in, the, that, in the, or that song, Psychosocial, that part in the middle where there's like that, I guess, breakdown, I don't know. I don't know if you'd call that a breakdown. I just remember hearing that song in Guitar Hero and then thinking, oh wow, that sounds a lot like Lamb of God. I'm not saying they straight ripped it off, but it sounds very similar to that song. But yeah, Subtle Arts from Murder Persuasion, though, is very good. It's a little more mid tempo, but the groove is very strong on there. Pariah, that's such a kick ass song. I think the lyrics for that one are also good. There's just one line, it's even in all caps in there. Oh yeah, it's just like, it, like there's like all the lyrics, and then it's just in all caps, it just says, fuck off and die. Um, fuck off and, you piece of shit, I won't say your name, but I will say this, fuck off and die, sooner the better. You've shut out your eyes, but I'm seeing you cannot feel anything of worth. Know that you've pissed life away, lost in your narcotic dreams, heart pumping futile shit through your veins. Why does it bother? I want to punch you in your sucking face and see you, your, and see you bloody dust smear through the air in a polluted crimson arc, splattering in a useless pattern on concrete. Just kick ass, you know, just really pissed off and uh, just like vulgar and just fucking awesome. That's what I like about the lyrics on this album. So yeah. Um, yeah, so Pariah is great. Confessional is really good. It's not super memorable, but there's a part of it where it's like the groove is really, and also really heavy. Kind of like how I was talking about in, um, the Lairs in the Unborn, the groove kind of like pulls you along like it's a roller coaster. It's kind of hard to keep up with because they're playing at like, I'm not saying they're like fucking with Shuga or something, how they're playing at these insane complex patterns, but it's just the groove. It's like the time changes are really sudden, so that it kind of like, I don't know. But yeah, I'm not saying that this is the heaviest album out there, but groove-wise, it's 
um, one of my favorite albums for like just really good like groove. I don't know. And then O D H G A B F E. That um, I I was wondering what that acronym stood for, and what's funny is that it actually stands for Officer Dickhead gets a black fucking eye. So that's hilarious. It's like the super long acronym. And I kind of get, like, the southern rock kind of vibe from that song that you more, sounds more like something you'd hear from, like, Pantera, I guess. But then again, Lamb of God and Pantera are two very similar bands. But, yeah, it sounds like something you'd hear from a southern metal band, like Lamb of God. But, you know, like, southern metal, like Pantera or uh, Crowbar, I think, or I Hate God. Bands like that, like, who have that, like, southern rock kind of vibe. Um, you hear that a lot on um, Lamb of God stuff, but especially on Officer Dickhead Gets a Black Fucking Eye. And then there's, like, four demo tracks. Um, actually, no, there's one bonus track that's called Nippon, and it says Japanese release track. And then there's three other bonus tracks that are just demos, and I like how they have their original song titles for them, and then in, like, parentheses, it has, like, the name of the song, how it like, got put on the album. For example, it says Halfway, and then parentheses, it's a warning, so I guess they, like, that's, like, the name of their songs when they have it written, and then they just change it by the time they release out the album. I don't know. But this album, I fucking love. It's one of my favorite metal albums of all time, and, um... Yeah, fucking great. Um, this is if you're want if you're into more extreme metal, but you want to try Lamb of God, you might like this compared to the rest of their discography because this is a little bit heavier. But yeah, I'd probably give it a perfect ten. Honestly, it's a fucking great album. Really underrated too. Most people talk about um, Ashes of the Wake or Sacrament, or maybe as a palace is burned when they're talking about Lamb of God. But this really is my favorite from them. So yeah, that's it for this video. This review got kind of long. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.